Case study number two from the thousands of treatments that we've delivered here in my clinic is Patricia. Patricia is a 45 year old woman who was suffering with debilitating low back pain and sciatica following a head on motor vehicle accident. She rated her pain as an eight to a nine out of 10. She'd been suffering with this for a year and a half. It was severe pain and numbness as well into the right leg, including bowel dysfunction. So this is important to understand. <clears throat> the same nerves that cause that back pain are the same nerves that come down the leg, but they're also the same nerves that go to the bowel and the bladder and the reproductive organs. When you get to the point <clears throat> where you have some type of bowel dysfunction or bladder dysfunction, or certainly when you lose bowel or bladder function, that becomes emergency surgery. So in her case, she did in fact go in uh, for surgery. Uh, she had she tried everything else. She <clears throat> was also suffering from what we call an L5 S1 disc herniation. It affected all aspects of her life. She simply I'm just even trying to sit or trying to walk. And again, according to Patricia, she had always been full of life, always enjoying life, always active. And to quote her, now I don't recognize myself. Now understand what that does, not just from a pain perspective, but what that was doing to Patricia's mental health and even the effect on her other family members as well. And as I said, she had tried everything, the medical doctor, MRIs, chiropractors, uh, Chinese medicine, acupuncturists, physiotherapy, massage therapy, and then finally ended up with the orthopedic surgeon. Nine months into this ordeal, finally gave in to what we call an L5 S1 discectomy. So what they do there is they go in and they literally slice off that part of the disc that is from that disc herniation that's putting pressure on that nerve. And guess what? After that surgery, the pain continued to be just as bad. In fact, she was told by her surgeon, that's the way it's going to be for the rest of your life. Now, again, for some of you that might surprise you, what we do know out of the scientific journals themselves is that surgery has a 74.6% failure rate where one in three are back in the hospital within 30 days. And what a lot of people are never told, and this is gonna be very important for you, is even with what they consider a successful surgery, there's going to be scar tissue formation. So scar tissue formation, that's how the body's going to try to heal that surgery. And the early stages of that are, is normal, but if that continues to progress, you can then actually scar that nerve once again. So you may have walked away being one of those lucky ones who thought your surgery was successful, and down the road, that, that scar tissue may come back to haunt you if you're not taking any of the steps to deal with that. And the second thing they don't tell you is that surgery can't stop the progression of that degenerative disc disease. So again, you may think you've had successful surgery, and again, that's a small percentage you have. Down the road, okay, that osteoarthritis, that degenerative disc disease, is going to continue to progress. So what happened in Patricia's case? Well, she needed to come in for that comprehensive exam that we do where we do diagnostic digital x-rays, we do a full spine nerve scan, and it turns out that she didn't just have the L5-S1 disc herniation, she did in fact already have some advanced degenerative disc disease, and in fact she had four disc bulges, not just the one herniation. Patricia went on our eight-week program of a non-surgical non robotic laser spinal decompression as part of our whole neurospinal restoration program. This is critical because there are a lot of medical doctors out there who don't believe that you can do any form of spinal decompression, let alone our non-surgical robotic laser spinal decompression, after surgery. And that couldn't be further from the truth. That's why Patricia has what we call failed back surgery. There is actually, this is actually a, a technical term for this where people have gone through the surgery and they are no better, and in fact, in a lot of cases, even worse off. So failed back syndrome or, or failed surgical back syndrome. What happened in Patricia's case once going through our program? A 30% increase in disc height at the L5-S1 as proven on x-ray. All of the disc bulges and disc herniations actually receded. All of her ranges of motion, her ability to move either doubled or even tripled. And to quote Patricia, it's feeling good. A year and a half of not being able to do anything and it's now feeling good. Better sleep, better mental health, able to do the things that she really deserves to be doing.